In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicott. The official podcast of Vundablog.com, the home of whatever. The podcast that knows that the quickest way to a man's heart is through his infinity stone. Right, guys? Right? Right, guys? Because the soul stone. Hi, I'm your host. <laughs> my name is Steven. Steven. With me today is my loyal cohortress. Danielle, how you doing, Danielle? I'm great. Sorry, that You're was a yawn. Yawn-lacious. I'm great. Danielle is yawning because we've had a busy day of socializing and slash gardening, gardening prep, yeah. construction things. I'm an old lady now, and I love gardening. She loves gardening, and she loves my titties. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, that's our fun uh, drunk lady at Home Depot. Apparently, I sound like Dorothy Parker. That's what I was told. And that's what you were told by, yeah, by someone Dan. who has heard of old yeah. actresses. Old actresses. Well, we are joined also by the Midnight Hounds. You can see them on Instagram, but right now they're in the bed. Rusty is perched above us in the upper pillow chambers. He's pillow class. <laughs> then Duke <laughs> is class. Duke is here in the middle, in between. Danielle and I in the Linda Lounge bed area. Don't tell them we're podcasting from a bed. That's so lazy. Well, we've done like hundreds of podcasts from the bed. I know, but and so many podcasts from bed. Don't tell them that they've we're doing heard it. the bed like coils. Okay, we're not in a bed. <laughs> <laughs> we're in a time machine. <laughs> All right, that's tra- bed shaped. Traveling through the Vundasphere at a bajillion Smash miles. Lines. Per Smellion, okay? Xena is in the lower... Warp, warp, warp. Morty is in the lower hindquarters of the... Like he's in, like, basically a gunner station below us. <laughs> um, just basically taking a nap in a delicious fur fleece cozy cave in this gunner station. It's delicious. Um, Rusty is above us in what I guess would be called, like, a crow's nest on, like, an old-timey ship. <laughs> But on our uh, galactic class interdimensional time travel vessel, Rusty is uh, just up there looking for flies to eat because he's hungry. <laughs> and he likes snapping at flies. Duke is in the center in command position. You already told him this. Well, you had to reframe it now because now we're in a time sphere. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm laying down in the time bed next to the time to The time bed! So, let's talk about Steven and Danny real quick. Yeah, just do it. I'm yawning. Because so Danny has terrible. started turned into a thing now that we start the podcast with being like, How you doing? Yeah, that's good. We should How you doing, Danielle? How are you doing? I'm good. I got a little dog cuddling my head. I'm good. Yeah. I had an eventful week, sort of. I had an annoying week, but yeah. So after many months of uh listening to stand up in podcast form and listening to podcasts like uh, The Church of What's Happening Now um, with uh, Joey Coco Diaz and Lisa Yat. Um, I have been, like, you know, dipping my toe to stand up. We In chapter 56, I believe, our episode, Intrical mm-hmm. Comedy, we read out my original stand up routine that I did back in the day day. Um, I think it was around, like, 2008 ish. It was around when Obama got elected. So it was, like, 2007, 2008. Um, 
but it was just they never tried it or really made it work at all. <laughs> so uh, there was an open mic night. I was looking at open mic nights because mm -hmm. supposedly you need like you know just to get a lot of stage time underneath. You have oh, to find yeah, a lot yeah. of open mic nights. Mm -hmm. um, so I found the nearest open mic night near me. He's at this bar called Little Hoolies <laughs> that uh, one of my cousins um, has frequented in darker days of his life. I've been to Little Hoolies. I know what it's like. So I went there on open mic night and uh, I performed to a crowd of uh, like older bikers. Um, what did I say? Like like 30 40 year old women on like their girls night out like playing pool getting drunk and uh several strange looking um quirky looking bar type characters and other people um and i got there uh looked around felt immediately like holy shit there's like 10 people here <laughs> And then I walked up, I bought a $2.70 Coca-Cola in a plastic cup, and I tipped the bartender the other rest of the $10 bill I had. So you Just, paid them to perform? Huh? You paid them to perform? Well, I figured it's, you know, I'm not walking in there, they don't know me from Adam, I yeah, might as yeah. well tip the house 7 bucks for showing up. True, true, true. Um, on top of buying the drink. So then I nursed that drink, and then I asked who to ask about the one mic night, and then he was like, oh, the guy on stage with the bass guitar, and he was a long-haired, uh, like, older dude who was a very, very intoxicated named Johnny. And him and his band were jamming out super hard. They did a couple co solos. They did a couple guitar solos. They did a sing-along. And then when they finally took a break, I'm like, hey, I'd like to do some stand-up comedy. And he was like, awesome. Uh, if you wait uh, in, like, 15 minutes, this place gets packed. be a lot more people. And I was like, all right, cool. So I waited like 35 minutes and like three more people showed up and I was just like, okay, let's do this. And uh, I got on stage and my uh, opening joke was so tame for this audience of drunk people and bikers mm -hmm. that it fell so flat <laughs> and I bombed so hard trying to be self-deprecating about myself. But I love it. Um, you went out there and you did something. I'm very proud of you. Just FYI. Yeah. FYI Podcast Land, I'm proud of him. Thank you. Co Fortress Wife. Yes. Um so my opening joke was Yo yo yo, my name is Steven Escadero and uh fuck what was it? Oh and I'm the greatest comedian in the history of Kendall. Unfortunately, this is my first night, so it's gonna be rough up here. Um and I got nothing. And then I followed that up with, I do a podcast uh, with my wife. And uh, you can probably tell I'm a podcaster because of my Did you adopt that ridiculous voice when you were up there? Huh? I tried not to, but every time I retell it, I do it in the ridiculous voice. But did you do it up on the no, stage? No, I don't think okay. so. I think I, I tr tried to be more, like, just myself, just talking okay, yeah. on stage is what I was going for. I don't think I put on the ridiculous voice. <laughs> right? Oh, no, that would have been terrible. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. And then and then I said I had a, you know, comic book t-shirt, a beard, and a Marshmallow Man physique. And I was like, these guys aren't getting my steak of Marshmallow Man joke. So... Fuck this. I'm going straight to my closer joke, which is at least the top, near the topic of sex. And so I did a couple more raunchier jokes, and I got a couple laughs from the bikers and stuff, and a couple pops by the end of my set, um, which lasted four minutes. And then as I ended, and I'm like, all right, that's all I got. And some guy goes, that should be a lot longer. And I just like reach over the mic, and I'm like, that's what she said. And that got <laughs> a laugh, at least from him. And then I got off stage, and he told the one of the guys walked up to me, and you know it was really nice and encouraging, um, but also did like four minutes to me of like Robin Williams seventies stand up that he's memorized, which you know it's kind of awkward. That's hilarious. But it was fun. Sorry. It was cool, and I hope to do a couple I'm more fine, and get more stage time under my belt. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know really get good at being funnier in front of a room of people.
Um, why are you watching videos of people chicken fighting, bro? I'm not. I'm what paying attention are you? to you. Yeah, yeah. I see you're paying attention I to you. I am. I'm listening to you. So why are that you paying attention? My why are you bringing fully... attention to me on my phone right now? Why? Why'd you do that? I think you should mm-hmm. rethink your life right now. Alright, I'd like to issue a formal apology <laughs> from one host <laughs> to the other. It's okay. I should not. I won't lie to you that I'm like, right now, me. I'm feeling a little like tired and out of it because I'm, I'm letting the day hit me. So I'm sorry if I'm a little distracted. I'll be okay, so, attentive now. So then, attentive. let's uh, let's hold. Oh, no, I'm ready. No, I want to hold the intensive Infinity War uh-huh. discussion because me and Danielle saw Avengers Infinity War just like yes. a lot Everybody of other people else. did. We saw okay. it three times. We saw it three times opening weekend. Yes. All right, just like I've seen every freaking Marvel movie that's come out since Marvel. Show, I've always seen them three times opening weekend usually. I think Thor the like some of the stinkers I only see once or twice yeah. opening weekend. Thor the Dark World only got one viewing one opening viewing, weekend. Yeah. Winter Soldier, I think I did two. Two viewings, yeah, I remember that. Um, it was like two. Ragnarok, we did like two or three. I think we did two. Two, yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's different. But now that I've gotten on DVD and Blu-ray, I've been yeah, watching it. Watching it a lot. Ragnarok's very Ragnarok's enjoyable. Ragnarok's great. So you go on TV, come on, yeah, he's man. very enjoyable. So instead of talking about that, we are on the precipice of. Because we're going to talk about it for a whole panel at Florida Supercon. Yes. And we're going to talk about it ad nauseum, I'm sure, the rest of the year. And just to just to piggyback, don't forget, uh, to refresh you guys, we are going to, uh, or at least it's pretty confirmed that we will be doing to us, several please. panels at, at Florida Supercon, I think, what, six? Or 12? No. I don't know. I don't know. We're, in, insurmountable number, think about yeah. that. We're going to do that many. Boom. Which is very nerve wracking, but also very exciting because you know we'll be getting a lot of exposure and hopefully it won't be a total fucking disaster. Um, but yeah, we will be doing a lot of um, podcasting and we will be doing panels at Supercom. So put that on your calendar, mark it down. If you've ever wanted to see July 12th, just how chubby we are in real life through the fifteenth, you will be able to see the two chubbiest married people. We're not the chubbiest, but we're we're chubby, we're chunky. We're we're deliciously thick. We're delicious. Thick. You better, and we're not all. There's some. We got some thin members too. The Thundercats. We cast. do have like two thin members. But <laughs> like two. You no, know, they might get fat by then. We have no idea. Hopefully, but stuff them bu- full of hamburgers. They could balloon up. Time to start buying. Can pancakes. you imagine if that was some sort of inside, like, like fucked up, like joke you had on a podcast where you're like, I'm gonna intentionally make this person fat now. Oh. And I'm going to document it secretly anytime, online and expose it to people. Anytime there's like a conspiracy theory that a, a group of people have against another person's body, whether it's to make them gain weight or lose weight, that's pretty much horrible. It's so scary, the idea yeah. that you would do something like that. I also think it's increasingly fucked up. Like, increasingly. Like, the older I get, the more fucked up it seems to me. Uh-huh. Um, like, the people, like... I don't want to be disrespectful, because... You know, everyone's entitled to their own kink. Yeah. But the people that like Chubby purposely kinks. engorge people. Oh God. To the yeah. point that that's weird. Those people like need a forklift to move around. No, listen. Like I, I once you get to forklift levels of yeah, fatness, yeah, you're obviously you not living in the proper you're not balance. In the best life. You're not. Okay. Living your you're best not life. taking care of yourself. No. Yeah. I. I. And anyone I, yeah. enabling you to and encouraging you to I'm not. not I'm like, I'm result, not fat shaming. Not. Like, I, you know, I understand that, like, yeah. you know, no matter what, these people deserve rights, but it's just, at some level, and obviously me telling them this means nothing, so they can tell me to fuck off, but at some level, like, yeah, if you need a, if you need a forklift to get up, if mm-hmm. you need, like, if you can't get up, if you can't get off of bed, like, yeah, you gotta rethink that life, dude, you gotta... If you can't get to a doctor without calling a fire truck... You gotta, you gotta figure some shit out. You gotta figure it out. Dude. Okay, yeah. you gotta work on some shit. You gotta you know? do some planning. You gotta meet better people. You gotta figure yeah. some shit out. Yeah, Just I mean, yeah. FYI. You need help though. Like I'm not. That's the thing. I don't want to. Like, what the fuck did I get here? I don't. Uh, fat fat shaming. Okay, okay, okay. And then you were like, "We were talking about for some reason you started Sorry. talking about kinks." And then oh, because I said that I'm uncomfortable when people control other people's bodies. There like you go. Conspiracy theories. And then you turned it into this whole thing. Not Sorry. to kink shame, but let's kink shame. Same 
<laughs> Ew. Yeah. No, what I, I, if we're on the subject of kink shaming, which I will, let's do it. Because I don't care. Let's talk about whatever today. Mm-hmm. Um, I will be the first well, person oh to say. Oh my God. What? This is the first time we've talked about whatever. Yeah. And I literally say we're the home of whatever every day. Oh my God. Well, this is groundbreaking. Yeah, everyone. Well. We've just melted down the Bundesphere. So mm-hmm. my king shame, I will gladly and proudly say this is, okay. I don't think there is anything wrong with saying daddy, calling your partner daddy during sex. Like, I don't think there is anything inherently wrong with that. Like, if you're having a sexy time and you call them daddy or whatever. I do have a problem with that daddy... Infant voice? No, dom daddy little girl kink where the person behaves like a toddler and wears diapers. diapers. Yes, that is... I'm sorry. I cannot sit here and tell you that, like, whatever... Or, or I am king also, shaming. Also, I am officially also king shaming. Is like like the the grown adult woman like having like a temper tantrum, like yeah. throwing spaghetti and yeah. like screaming at the top of your lungs yeah. and like pounding your fist. Yeah. Like, no, it's so. I watched a video recently. It was like on Facebook, and it was two people who engage in DDLG, which is da- Dom Daddy Little Little Girl whatever, and. I will give them this. They at least were like, well, you know, we don't do it in public around other people because we understand that they did not consent to us doing it in front of them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's our thing and we do it and we don't do it in front of other people. They also said that it wasn't sexual for them. Mm -hmm. And that, but it was just still like, I find... and. I find it, I'm sorry, very disturbing. Like, you wear diapers, and you go into a room, and you draw, and and I guess maybe because it wasn't sexual, like, it was less creepy, because it just kind of seemed like an outlet for her. Yeah, but at the, the end, sexual, someone's gonna fuck your mouth because you're a baby. Like, well, but she says they don't, so. Yeah. I don't know. But, like, the people that do have, like, the sexual aspect of it, it is too creepy. It's, it is, yeah, I'm sorry. It's just too much. Like, it's too much for you to be fucking someone and her, for them to be like, yeah, but daddy. The line must be drawn here. This far. No you. father. Captain Picard said it. It's just kind of like how, yeah, like I just, there, if people are like, don't kink shame, like there, and there's, this becomes this thing on the internet sphere of like, don't kink shame people like, I'm sorry, some people should be kink shamed if their kinks are fucking dangerous or just like or psychologically like super bizarre. Creepy. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, I'm sorry. Like, like if the only way you get off is if again somebody is basically like glorified doing a Hitler like, salute or something or like Yeah, you should probably oh, fuck like, you. I'm gonna make you feel dirty about it if you're doing something dirty. Fuck exactly. You. <laughs> like t- maybe don't work you know what you know what the problem is is that so many of those people with really like bizarre out there potentially dangerous and upsetting kinks want to be like publicly like this is my kink and there's no shame in it like they don't want to have shame and i'm like maybe you just you should have a little bit of shame like other people don't need to have shame but you sir it's should annoying have too because shame. all of a sudden these people like they're like they're like in like a Black Panther party because they're like because they like to suck feet or whatever you know what I mean like, like woo. That's, and that's the thing is that like feet a foot fetish isn't even like in the terms of kink that is it's like the low end that of the is radius. the modest most that's yeah. not even kinky anymore isn't even kinky anymore to like feet like it's so normal mm-hmm. Quentin Tarantino is like put it into the fucking you get eighty sphere. million dollars for a foot shot yeah like come on on uh, opening it's, weekend it's uh, yeah what was feet are in were we recently with a foot sh- oh a quiet place like that's just that's totally porn, like yeah. yeah yeah it's just all a bunch of porn and for for them and like and so it's just yeah I don't know like that is so tame and no I'm talking about some just the the, the shit that I'm just like nah you really you know, need to talk to someone about this we gotta bring back sexy in the in the old school way well we gotta do fucking ankle shot like, oh Ooh, look at that bitch's ankle look at that bitch's ankle yo oh my god she's, she's a whore she's a <laughs> that girl fucks look at her ankle don't slut sh- don't foot chain no, imagine, no, I'm imagining, like, like a Victorian, oh, like, yeah. American pie, 
where they're just like, oh my god, did you see oh, her ankles? Dude, that... Her father must be rich, bro! Dude, you just said the most inspired <laughs> thing ever, and a, a Victorian American, American pie. pie. We're claiming it's copyright. Dude. Don't bro. write it. We just copywrote that shit. That is fucking hilarious. Dude. That is hilarious. What would you they see fuck, her ankles? What would they fuck her instead of a pie? Her father must be so amazing. What would they fuck instead of a pie? Would he even fuck a pie? A or would he pie? just like have like... <laughs> would he just look? I've heard shepherd's pie. He's just like a virgin field girl's vagina. Oh my god. Really? Really? I love shepherd's pie. <laughs> but in my mouth, you can't eat it after you fuck it. <laughs> but it's it's extra salt, right? Oh, no protein. Okay. Oh man. Pass it go. She was whole. Hated when the Bond boys get in the conversation. Is that even true? What? That horrible whole concept of American pie. That it feels like warm apple pie. Pussy? Yeah. Is does pussy feel like, <laughs> like apple, apple pie? See the problem is I've never fucked an apple pie. So I really don't know so. <laughs> For the sake of this podcast, we're in the middle of a sentence now. <laughs> For the sake of this podcast, I'm going to fuck a pie. Oh, my God. No. I think that... I think what American Pie was trying to say here, Danielle, mm-hmm. was that it's a metaphor. You didn't put our on-air sign either. I'm sorry. For what the most wholesome mm-hmm. American like sweet thing is no dude it's because one of those guys said it's like fucking a pie no i don't know but it's also a method metaphor (laughs) okay for americana for pussies for americana and it's also a metaphor for like the 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 modern you know 1950s housewife her her stereotypical thing is that she's baking a warm apple pie and for her man when she comes home and the temperature of the pie you know, be hot. You know, yeah. porn. I would like to see. Oh shit! I would like to see a porn that's like totally a play on like fifties housewife shit, but like the idea that like remember how they used to tell women like oh you always have to be ready for like a guy and like you have to be dressed up and then he can just take you whenever he oh, wants God. basically. But what if if, if this You're would be cons- if this would be no consensual. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. You can fucking walk. He's gonna get home and he's gonna be like no. Oh, my it's God. just it's this is like my kinky thing. It'd be sexy if there was a porno where it's like a porn star was dressed like a 50s housewife and was like, oh my, my, I have so much to do today. I have to fucking bake and I have to fucking do laundry. And then her husband came home and he's all like, I'm fucking horny. And she's like, oh, I have to do all this stuff. And he's like, you can still do it. And just the whole time she's cooking and cleaning, he's fucking her from behind. Like, that'd be hot. As, he, as she's doing her chores? Yeah, like every time she bends over, he's just like... Fine. I don't know why I find that sexy, but I would find that sexy if someone made a porn of that. Did I just give away too much on this podcast? Is that more I know? I'm into it. No, You're I'm into, into it, right? I'm Isn't that it. hot? That's sexy, though, right? This is a like hot, steamy podcast. Right, Rusty? Line. This reminds me of Chapter 69, our sexy random You could special. do one of, like, the, her on the laundry, doing the laundry, bends her over the laundry, fucks her in the laundry. She's baking a pie, like, bends her over the fucking oven, fucks her by the oven. A lot of great ideas coming on this podcast. I know. Like, like, Victorian American Pie. <laughs> and then we got a whole porn franchise. Apparently, we're very obsessed called, with American Pie. It's called House Chores. High House Chores. 50s House Chores get fucked. Oh, my God. 50s House Chores? Are you trying no. to say porn? Oh, okay. Maybe it'd be called the chore fucker or <laughs> chore master. <laughs> the chore fucker. Fuck this laundry. Fuck it. Fuck this. It's how she's doing it. Stop making it ridiculous. <laughs> He's not going to put his dick in the laundry. Then she's going to have to clean it again. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I'm going to be at this all day with you. And then she's my like, laundry. oh, Gerald, you have some fucking me. I have to make a roast. Your boss is coming over at eight. It'll be fine. Just put in a Stouffer's. And then the milkman comes. Oh, and the milkman's like... And then he's like, wait, I need a tip. And then she's like, <laughs> sorry, all I can all do is I take the is tip. Put, is and put then my, he's your banging dick in my her. Mouth. And then he's sucking off the milk. Man. And it's like, Whoa. and it's like, Gerald, Tommy, and they like shake hands as they're like, Burr. I don't know why. And then, no, and then no. This is the this is the piano response. <laughs> is that he asked the milkman? He goes, "I'm thirsty. Can I get one?" And he drinks one with the milkman. Oh, totally. And they clink milk. They clink milks. So yes. They're like, "Oh yeah, 
I I just I think it'd be really funny to do a porno like that. Like I don't know, it just would be really funny to me. And the opening line, she's like, "I miss saying the word Dick Nixon. It's just fun to say Dick." God damn it! Why are we bringing Richard Nixon into this? Um, because his name is D- has Dick in it. Well, that's the seventies too. Oh, is he? Yeah, that's all the fifties, Stephen. Get out! But of he here. was around. Fail. In the sixties. Fail. But he was he, he was been around since the sixties. He was a political figure in the fifties. Fail. I'm gonna double down on this. Fail. I'm gonna find out right now. Why do you ruin my concepts? Why? Why? By adding Dick Nixon? Yes. Sorry, I made it unsexy by bringing up. Dick oh, you Nixon. know what that reminds me? Did you ever see that movie Dick? Um, with Kirsten Dunst, the funny one. The funny one I yeah. did, but it's funny. I haven't and seen Michelle it Williams, since was it. the early two thousands. I used to watch that movie so a lot. I literally because don't my roommate anything. in college got me into that movie, and I used to watch it a lot. Richard Nixon. I oh, you should tell the funny story of how we thought up of that game show. Oh yeah. Um, hold on, I'm too busy trying to figure out Nixon facts. <laughs> Okay. That'll blow your mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what I want to know right now. Nixon facts that'll blow my mind. Okay, anyway, so I'll t- I'll bring context into this. So Stephen and I, I yesterday I watched this uh, fucking kind of shitty movie. It kind of it okay. was shitty. He became a senator of California in uh-huh. 1953. Cunt. Oh, whoa, boom! I just went just hardcore. Me a cunt? I was channeling my inner Dick Did Nixon. You just I'm call sorry. Me a cunt? I was channeling my inner Dick Nixon. Now they're going to think you're an abusive person calling me a cunt. You hear that? Help! I need assistance. Ah. I gotta tell the friend story now. Yeah. Anyway. I'm sorry. So. I'm sorry. Richard Nixon, get back in your jar. Whatever. You're a dick. Anyway. So I was watching this terrible movie called Bachelorette. It's on Netflix now. It stars Kirsten Dunst and Isla Fisher and Rebel Wilson. And then there was a third actress, <coughs> and I could not remember her name for the life of me, even though I'd seen her. She'd been in Mean Girls and, um, I think, Masters of Sex and all that kind of stuff like that. Anyway, so I couldn't remember her fucking name um, yesterday. And then all day passed today, and then, like, we're in, like, we're, I'm showering, like, at, like, 2 o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon. And then I just open my mouth and go, Lizzie Kaplan! And, like, I'm like, that's her Whoa. fucking name, and I was right. Lizzie Kaplan. Lizzie Kaplan is the third girl, the fourth person in Bachelorette. Bachelorette, by the way, is a really fucking terrible movie about how three skinny women hate their fat friend. Like, that's basically the whole sum of it. Anyway, so I thought, wouldn't it be hilarious if there was a game show that was like a reality game show that followed you around until you thought of the right answer, but you could never use Google and the minute you declare the answer, it has to be a hundred percent right. So you can't say you gotta keep it like, in your brain the whole time. You can't say like you, Sam, you can't say like Samuel L. Johnson. You know what I mean? Like it has to be the right name, the right trivia. Be 100% answer. Right. What Samuel L. Johnson? You gotta put your your answer a hundred percent. Your answer has to be a hundred percent right. So you have us. You have. Let's say we play this game over the course of a week. So you have, it's each reality mm-hmm. episode. Would be you have I'm a week to play this game. people are playing this over the course of their lives. Thing. No, that's <laughs> too dramatic. If you did, if no. you plan this show For out nine years, <laughs> if you plan this show out, it would be um, over the course of a week, and they'd ask them a bunch of questions, and they couldn't answer, and they have like a week to answer everything. I know that to other people, that's probably the most boring bullshit. But they have to earth. live like without any technology, yeah. so they can no. just think in yeah. their own brain. They just have brains. to think in their own brain. Remember, you have to recall. I guess they could get posted like the whole list of questions, and they could just like just sit there. And I go. think that it could. Stephen was like, "Oh yeah, blah blah blah." And they don't. Yeah, they don't get any help, and they don't go to social media. And I'm like, it would be funny. I'm sorry, it would be funny. And the best part is that all the topics have to be things that they claim that they know. So I think if we, you didn't check off, you yeah. didn't know this thing, we're not going to ever do that. I think we just better. invented the most boring game genre. Huh? I think we just invented the most but boring game But in the game modern genre. age, when motherfuckers are watching motherfuckers play video games yeah. for exactly. hundreds of billions of hours You can online, watch a reality show where a guy goes to work or goes home. And then also he's just like, Jeff Goldblum! Oh my god! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, just for that perfect, that <laughs> moment of total <laughs> realization where you just yell the answer out like a psycho. <laughs> like, that's the best part of remembering something like that. <laughs> is that you never quietly go, oh, Tommy Lee Jones. No, you always loudly go, Tommy Lee Jones! Yeah. Like, you yell it out. Yeah. So You can you even just, make it something as mundane as, 
what is the name of your second grade teacher? And you're yeah. like, uh, uh. Mrs. Kennedy! Like, yeah, like, something like that. Mrs. Vet. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Oh, but that would be wrong because you said the answer out loud and you weren't sure and it was the wrong answer. Oh, I got that. Anyway, so that would be a fun show. And what were you going to talk about? You were going to... Okay, so I found this great news... Sad, tragic news story. Okay. About the people of France. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And the horrors of socialized medicine. I'm sure someone could... And Fox News could interpret this as... So, basically, in France, this poor woman calls 911 because she is sick and her stomach hurts and she feels like she's going to die and she What's feels so French? sick. What's French? 911, like 111? Um, so she calls 911 and the operator goes... She's telling the operator, my stomach hurts, I feel like I'm going to die. Today's going to be the day I die. <laughs> And the operator goes in the most French way, I imagine, while smoking a cigarette. Everyone dies. Everyone dies. That is the way of life. That's a end. smoking cigarette uh, sound effect. If Everyone you can dies. call me, you can call the home doctor. He will come to visit you at your home. He will fix you. And she's like, can you call the home doctor for me? And she's like, no, no, no. You must hang up with me. And you must get the home doctor on the phone. So she called the home doctor, and, and the home doctor came and called an ambulance, and, and in the died. time, she died on the, on the road. Yeah. The so hospital. they're investigating that person, but honestly, though, that okay. story is both really sad and tragic, but hilariously the most French thing you ever heard in your life. Like, it almost seems like there's, like, a French disease, like, ennui is, like, a French They've disorder. They've been working too hard. The ennui is out of hand. The ennui is coming to them. Soon we will have massive uh, homicide, uh, not homicide, uh, the people know. need vacation. The, the people ennui in, has piled up. See, we have so much death because they will never answer the phone when the people call the emergency line. We are French. We do terrible. I, I, I'm sorry. I know, you know, I refuse to feel guilty about doing terrible French accents. And here's fucking why. Because the French are a bunch of fucking colonizers. Well, you're colonizers and and snobs. (laughs) You're a bunch of colonizers and snobs. Well, no, I won't say snobs. But you're a bunch of colonizers. You are not an oppressed people, the French. Like, the French, you know, the, the colonized French. And therefore... I will make fun of your stupid accent. Like, Plus. I refuse. Plus, you yes. guys sold us Louisiana. Yeah. And it leaks. Okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> What's up with this water, three, bro? The water, bro, it's, it's everywhere. It's garbage. <laughs> Plus, also, you gave us a, you have a, we sold you statue. The statue rusted. It's so <laughs> rusty now. It's not even, uh. Oh, why am I doing the, the French cheap. accent? <laughs> why am I doing the French accent for an American problem? We sold you the statue. The statue rusts. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. You have it green now. It is a green woman. Before it was a you know, copper woman. Originally, we were going to write in the book in French. It was going to say, <laughs> fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, American <laughs> horrible people. You Suck a fat French dick. <laughs> 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 what fun. You are the worst. Uh, I think we should take the statue back, huh? We'll uh, clean it up, make it look good. Don't you know, when we get you the statue, you are supposed to put oil upon it, and you didn't do that, and now it turned all green and disgusting. Don't you know who my father is? (laughs) Napoleon Bonaparte Jr. (laughs) Shit. Can you imagine? I'm sorry. There's nothing more badass to me than the idea that, like, the French gave us a whole ass statue. Like, they were like, <laughs> like oh, here you go. We, we no, just had we it lying so around. Appre- we are so appreciative. We need to send them, like, something that looks really cool. Yeah. Let's send like, them. Like, something big. Yeah. So that they always think, like, wolf. America. Those fucking French people. But now it's because they were, no, because in their minds they're like, we don't need any American shit. We have our own mm-hmm. shit. We have uh, the tower. If, uh, mm-hmm. Well, actually, no, the, ta- the Eiffel Tower didn't exist at the time they made the Statue of Liberty, so that doesn't count. You Whatever. Know, it probably is. It's probably like, they were just like, we would you have. Know what? You guys don't have enough mountains Eiffel. over here. 
Yeah. You need something cool. We send you something this cool. Is, uh, to crazy. decorate. So still, I know there's an actual interesting true story of how this happened, but I'm sorry. It's hilarious. It's still a gift from France, and I think it is funny that they just gave us a whole ass statue. They're just like, here you go. You obviously need something nice over there because it is a total shit all in that. What is that city you're calling it? New York? Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Yeah. Taking a step on the city. How long is it going city? to be new? It's been around for how long? <laughs> you fucking stupid. You could have called it something else. You could have Do called it. Do you understand the... the present times? <laughs> You should change the name every few years to uh, Mid York City, Old York ongoing City, York City, Ongoing mm-hmm. York City, Still continuously <laughs> York City, <laughs> Not yet future York. Can you imagine if Donald Trump just like <laughs> lost his the one little left of his mind he has, and he's like, I'm changing the name of New York City. To ongoing continuous <laughs> city because <laughs> I feel it, it's no longer new. It's not accurate. <laughs> it's not accurate. You cannot lie. I'm gonna no. call it tremendous city. No, I like I like I like not quite future city. Not quite future city. <laughs> it's like we're getting there, but we're not quite there. <laughs> not quite future York. Sorry. What are we talking about anymore? <laughs> what are we in the fu- what? Uh, you want to talk about whatever? This is where whatever leads. I, I said... We, we fell through a black whatever. hole of we did. just ridiculousness. We did it? fall through a black hole of ridiculousness. I just want to keep doing a French accent, but I'm going to stop now. No, we just got to go to more French topics, obviously. Oh, so, so Emmanuel, Emmanuel Macron. Is he made of macarons? Macron. Macron. Or Macron. Is that Macron. the same as a macaroon? No, my love. Not at all. Did his forefathers make macarons? <laughs> I don't know if his he forefathers made macarons. Uh, is it possible? It, I guess. That they invented I'm, macarons? A lot of like, things are possible. Like, maybe he's like Johnny Nabisco. You know? Johnny <laughs> Nabisco. Is there a Johnny Nabisco? Look at that Nabisco kid. He's so rich. <laughs> Look at him. Mr. Jeffrey National know. Biscuit <laughs> Company. <laughs> we were just talking dude. about how like crazy it is. There are like, super rich people in this world. That are rich off like the stupidest shit. Like, we were picking up some pallet wood today to to do something in the in the mm-hmm. garden, and I'm like, man, who makes pallets? And Stephen just goes, a super fucking rich person. <laughs> yeah. and like, and I'm like, yeah, man, this little shit that we don't even think about on a day to day basis. Some motherfuckers on the ground floor raking in the cash. Yeah, the motherfucker who sells the screws is rich. The yeah, motherfucker the motherfucker who sells the screws. Sells the That's why, like, I honestly want to do that. Like, I want to get in. Like, okay, I'll never forget there's a Parks and Rec episode where, um, fuck, um, oh, what's his name? Leslie's Ben. Ben tells, um. Thank God, that was almost 12 years old. Ben! Would have taken four days yeah, to do this right. podcast. Ben tells t- uh, Tom. To invest in a dry cleaning transactional holding company, because <laughs> and any and, it, and what's hilarious is that later on, someone's like, "I invested in dry clean transactional holding, and I'm super rich now." Like, no, but it's true. It's like it's like these stupid little things that like only accountants think of as good business mm-hmm. deals are where all the money is. Like, I want to get on the ground floor. Like, I want to I want to make a new fucking. I don't know, screw, and I want to make a billion dollars from selling the screw to people. Like, that's all you got to do. So you got to make it. I invented Velcro for wood. Eat it. Boom. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, you know. It's funny. So, uh... Oh, my God. Do you want to talk a little bit about, about Avengers Infinity neck. War? Are you even into that right now? Or you... How much time is on that? We minutes? have been talking about okay, no, nonsense no, no, no. No, 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 no. for 40 minutes. I think we're no, good. No, if we do 10 more minutes of nonsense, we're good. Okay, cool. 10 more minutes of nonsense. We could probably stop here, but 10 more minutes. No, no, 10 more minutes. Do you have nonsense. any more nonsense to tell them? Well, I have to say that if you want to reach us online, you can find us on a thing called <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> Twitter! At Vundablog and at Vundacast. Twitter. Um, you can also uh, reach out to us via email. At Vundablog at Gmail and at Vundacast at Gmail. If Twatter. that is your fancy. Uh, I'm also toying with the idea, Danielle, mm-hmm. of uh, signing up for OutCon in August because we had such a great time at the first OutCon. Mm-hmm. Does that sound like a doable thing? What? 
Outcon one day, August. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Yeehaw. What are you asking me on here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm putting you on the spot in front of the peoples. Um, other thing to plug radiate.fm Mondays. You can hear the Vundacast on the air with everybody. How exciting. I would also like to give a shout out and give the Vundacast humanitarian personages person of the year award to DJ Delete of radiate.fm Peter, you are the man. He did a secret covert operation to help repair a human's life. And for that, he gets the highest honor we can award. And next time he's here, he can have Rusty. Who is this? Peter. Oh, yeah. Okay. Rusty he can can't have Rusty. No one can have Rusty. He can sit on your lap while you're here <laughs> and bite you and lick you. There you go. It's the best mm -hmm. in both worlds. Right, Rusty? Right, Rusty, yeah. Oh, he's so sleepy he won't even get mad at me. He won't even get grumpy at you. Poor Rusty, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's tired. Okay. One more topic <coughs> to one more close nonsense. the mm -hmm. podcast. Mm -hmm. I am insanely excited about Solo. Yes! Oh, it's a so Star That's Wars good. story. I am excited, too. And... I have been excited about Solo's Star Wars story since The Last Jedi, since in February yeah, when everyone was like, shitting all over I it. don't know if the Star Wars Solo trailer doesn't come out. I yeah. don't think I'm going to care when it comes yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I don't know. This teaser, they didn't show that much. That movie must be really rough. <laughs> no, motherfucker. <laughs> this is Lawrence Kasdan <laughs> writing fucking Han Solo again. The man who and ostensibly of invented Lando Calrissian, getting back into Lando's boots. Mm -hmm. Okay, fuck you, buddy. Mm -hmm. I've been hyped for Solo since they announced it. Okay, I'm super hyped that it's finally coming out, and everything we've seen has made that shit look like it has the goods, mm -hmm. including mm -hmm. having <laughs> Amelia Clark fucking Daenerys Targaryen in that shit. Oh totally! I, I'm I'm very I'm getting very excited for it. I was very I was skeptical at the beginning just because yeah, the, you know I think I think one of the things about movie movie going or being a movie fan in the 21st century is that we think we know so much about movies and we there's still a lot we don't know. Like unless you work in the business, <clears throat> there's still a lot you don't know. You know, and I and I feel like a lot of media people give us like half the story, and so much of it is like sensationalized because they're trying to get you to click on it and read it. Like people don't realize that yes, yeah, sometimes reshooting and firing directors and all kinds of things does signify a bad, you know, um, a bad deal for a project. Mm -hmm. But Sorry. so much of okay, save your oh my god for no, after. But so much of what happens like that is really just par for the course. And there's a lot of changing of hands and a lot of stuff that happens like that all the time. And I won't forget that they said that they were still... Cu they cut in a scene after Empire Strikes Back was in the theaters, mm -hmm. right? It was Empire Strikes Back. And, <clears throat> and I mean, obviously, yeah, you know, it's not 1980, blah, blah, anymore. Well, the first release had one cut and the second release... Re-release had another. Re-release had a different Or cut. they literally put in... A, as it was in the theaters, yeah, like they like re-released it as it was in the theaters. They put in a, a cut... And so, like, the idea that this movie wasn't going to be good because it wasn't finished, like, that doesn't mean anything. Like, people are working... I think people forget that human beings still make movies and that, I don't know, in your workplace, do projects ever get pushed the last minute? Or even though it doesn't matter how much yeah. prep time you do for something, it always seems like you're rushing yeah. at the last minute. What do you think this is? It's the same yeah. shit. And I bet when you, you film dinosaurs. It's you know it's so easy. It's it's just yeah. Like I think people forget, and I I think that you know, and I and then there's this kind of section of the fandom, this Star Wars fandom, and I really call these people fandom like very loosely because to me, if you're rooting, you're more for the fandom. failure. Yeah, they're you're more fandom. Yeah, you're, if you're rooting for the failure of, of Star Wars just because it's not going the way you want it to, you're like really not a fan. Um, yeah, there's a whole section of the fandom that wants that Kathleen Kennedy to fail and that they want this movie to fail and they want people to hate it 
and it's just kind of like what's so funny is that I remember all the angry the buzz of the angry bees of Last Jedi like oh I'm not watching any more fucking Star Wars movies yeah Solo had more pre-sales than Black Panther Black Panther just made like two billion dollars <laughs> like, it's making so much money um and it fucking sold out and and they're predicting that this is going to have like a hundred and seventy million dollar weekend or some ridiculous number like that. Solo, oh my god. Yeah, and it's on, and it's going on during Memorial Day weekend, so it's just kind of like you guys. I, and I'm sorry, more pre sales on Black Panther. I know all you fucking haters were buying a fucking ticket, so don't. I I hate this like false performative. I hate everything in the fandom now, and Kathleen Kennedy never getting another dollar from me. I'm like, you know, go shut the fuck up and sit over there. Like, I really, and I just want to call out somebody that I cannot stand. <laughs> Am I going to call out? I'm going to call her out. I'm going to fuck. That Grace Randolph chick, is her name Grace Randolph? Beyond or? the trailer? No? Beyond the trailer chick. I can't stand her ass. That's all I have to say. I can't stand her ass and her whole fan to me. She's our YouTube. She, go fuck yourself. She's, she's our she's YouTube. Go fuck herself. Like, because I think and the, I usually just ignore her. I don't like to engage. But then the other day, someone put up something in a in a group I'm in of her talking about how, oh, I think Solo is gonna be a big failure and it's gonna be finally the medicine that Kathy needs to fucking wake up or get fired. And I'm just like, how fucking gross of you to wish that this person would be fired especially like a real like one of the few major female, female i i can't even female women think are. of another female head of a studio i'm sure they exist that is known or as popular no I, I can't even think of one i'm sure they exist but like not on this scale i don't even know i would have to do my research but my point being that you're gross and yes i know it does not Women don't always have to support other women just by the virtue of them being women. But in this case, I'd say you should be rooting for her success. Because let me tell you something. Nobody else is going to get, you know, or not, well, not nobody else. But, like, most, I'm sure it's going to be harder for if they fired her and replaced her with yet another white and older male producer to have a sympathetic ear when it comes to diversity of mm -hmm. hiring, diversity of voices, getting... And obviously, yes, Kathy Kennedy's track record so far has not been that great. She is still hiring a lot of mm -hmm. white dudes to do a lot of Star Wars. But the point is, is that she's probably got far more of a sympathetic ear than if you fucking put Steve Mnuchin in charge of least, your fucking studio. And at least she's been involved with Lucasfilm and Indiana Jones movies and Steven Spielberg movies. Since the fucking, yeah. you know, since the early 80s. Yeah. Like, she's been there since the break. And it seems like they she are, and it seems like they are listening, they are listening, you know, like, they just hired that second unit director for JJ's episode 9. She's a black woman? Um, a, uh, a, a black, uh, black second unit director, and I have it on authority, someone in one of my chats said that she's an amazing person and really inspirational to listen to speak, she's done some, like, speaking at, at some summits and stuff like that. And she's very cool, and so they're very... And also, I know her work. I, I can't recall her name right off the top of my head right now, which is terrible. But I know her work because I've watched her episodes of Claws. I've watched Queen Sugar, and I know how talented... Like, she's talented. I like her work. So, yeah, I, I am not for that shit. So I'm excited for Solo. I want the Star Wars franchise to do well. I want to be in a world where people remember that... We like Star Wars. If you like Star Wars, you like Star Wars. And that's just just like Star Wars. Like, stop so much vitriol, dude. And they're so loud. That's the problem. Because they're not even all of the fandom, as it's obviously being seen. Because the books and the movies and the stuff is flying off the shelves and selling out. But they're such a vocal part of the fandom that it's very exhausting sometimes to just kind of deal with that shit, you know? I'm done on my thought. Sorry. Um, her name, I think, is... Um, yeah, it's Victory... Victoria Mahoney? Mahoney. Victoria Mahoney. Yes, that's Boom. her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just realized that Alden Ehrenreich, mm -hmm. he was the kid... He was the romantic lead in Beautiful Creatures 2013. Yeah. You I remember that? I did not that? realize. Oh, you my didn't know gosh. that? Oh, how funny. Yeah. That's amazing. And he looks so young in that movie. I know. No, he, he was like a baby in that, in that movie. movie. He did have terrible hair. He had like that, like Lucas Black, like Fast and Furious shitty. 
white guy southern boy haircut. Oh yeah. my god, it's the worst. But we're super excited for Solo. Fuck all you Star Wars haters who talking shit. Lando's Falcon looks awesome. I'm about to go we get have some been fucking going, car reactor pancakes we've been going, right now, We've bitch. gone to Denny's three times. Yeah, just eat some fucking pancakes. Just to sit at a booth and look at fucking Chewbacca's young, beautiful face. Yep. Um, We're on express elevator to hell. Going down. Two. One. Mark. <laughs> What topics do we talk about on the Vundacast? We talk about whatever we like, but mostly we talk about pop culture. We talk about Star Wars. Mira, who's Snow White? She's supposed to be some kind of consultant. Apparently, she saw an alien once. <laughs> Whoopie fucking do. Movies we've seen. Don't lie. All we talk about is Why aliens. Oh, yeah, right. All yeah, we right. talk about is aliens. All we talk about is bringing things back to Star Wars. <laughs> All we ever do is bring things back to 1997. Don't fuck around. Yeah, I guess he's right. He's sawing his phone out. Your face. Stop sawing us out, Steven. Stop telling the truth. Danielle, you are not alone. Neither are you listeners. Mondays at radiate.fm with the Vundercast. Chewing. We're home. The Vundercast, which is on Mondays at Radiate. Hey, Danielle. Yes. Co host of the Vundercast, co workers. Mm-hmm. How many nipples does Kylo Ren have? Well, only two, but they are glorious. To find out how glorious they are, tune in Mondays, radiate.fm. Ray love all year long till episode 9 comes out and beyond. Check it out. I am the ultimate badass. Yes, guys. State of the badass art. (laughs) You do not want to fuck with me. Hey, Radiate listeners. You should tune in to us on TuneIn. The podcast is also there. You should stitch yourself to us on Stitcher because we're down. And if you want to Google Play with us, our podcast is also on Google Play. But me, I, I just use iTunes to subscribe to my own podcast. Great! That's just fucking great, man! Now, what the fuck are we supposed to do? This is the real pretty shit now, man! You finished. Game over, man. It's game over. What the fuck are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? Well, and we're back from that awesome commercial break. Oh, yeah. So like I was saying, we are fucking living at Denny's now. I got, <laughs> we got cups with the Falcon <laughs> on it. This summer, we're buying some solo Legos. Disney's empire is working its way into my soul yet again. I have lived my life to see young... Chewbacca living it up. Yep. My dream scene in this movie is that the movie ends with Chewbacca making out with a beautiful other Wookiee and Han just looking at him like, well, how is he the romantic lead in this movie? <laughs> and I'm so good looking <laughs> and have been flirting the entire movie. I don't understand. This is, to me, this is the Jay and Silent Bob trick back for Chewbacca. Mm-hmm. He better have, he better be like the fucking Jack Bauer of this movie. Like, he better be in so much action. I know, I'm excited. All right, right, he's gonna punch, he's gonna kick, he needs to know karate, he needs to know kung fu. (laughs) If he knows Wookiee kung fu, (coughs) Wookiee fu? Oh my god. Wook fu! If he knows Wookiee kung fu and he visits the city of not future yet New York, that would be the best movie ever. Amazing. I have been your host. (laughs) Yes, you have. Steven. I have been your host, Cohortress. I've been been Cohortress. Ah, ah, ah. Duke, Rusty, Zena, Morty. Duke, Rusty, Zena, Morty. That's all of them. Okay, I thought I was missing one. <laughs> you thought we had more dogs? Yeah, we need pancakes, Dad. You are. You need some pancakes. Remember, kids, when you are building your garden out of cinder blocks, always borrow the truck. Never, never rent a truck. Borrow that truck from somebody. You know someone with the truck, people. Just find them. 
Do there. Do what you gotta do. Boom pass press. Uh Wundercast? Give yeah. it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name.